Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is the latest Arsenal news and transfer news. According to Fabrizio Romano, Arsenal interested in signing Jeremy Frimpong from Balivacuzen. Now, a couple of clubs are interested, but Arsenal are one of those teams that have had a long term interest in the Dutch international. And according to Romano, this summer, he is one to watch. He's, two he's one of two players Arsenal interested in at Balivacuzen, of course, including Victor Boniface as well. We'll also talk about Calvin Phillips. Arsenal are monitoring the situation situation of Calvin Phillips at Manchester City they think a deal can be done on loan in January however Man City don't want to sell to us they think they have made a mistake by selling Zichenko and Gabriel Jesus to Arsenal they don't want to repeat that same error hit the like button subscribe to the uh, to the channel as well I want your thoughts I want your opinions in the comment box below a real right back in Jeremy Frippong is played as um, a traditional right back. He's also played also as um, uh, uh, as, as a right wing uh, midfielder right there. He's played as a right wing back like Trent, like Chris James, uh, you know, in that manner. Do you prefer a player like Jeremy Frippong over Benjamin White at right back? Do you prefer a more natural right back as compared to Ben White, who is a centre back, stroke turned? right back i want your thoughts i want your opinions i also what do you think about jeremy Frippong? he's having a real good season five goals seven assists already um in the German bundesliga and we are already uh you know halfway the the, the the campaign so he's already having a very good campaign and if arsenal get the chance to sign him would you actually take him over benjamin white let me know in the comment box below now fabrizio romano says that uh there the, are the, a couple of players to watch at balevacuzen as so many clubs are interested um in getting some of their real price assets but jerry Fripong is one player to watch so arsenal bayern chelsea man united newcastle and manchester city are all interested in signing the dutch right back he's only 23 years of age and he's already been phenomenal this is the second season running for Jeremy Frimpong to be playing at the highest level and producing the highest of results. This season alone, he's got five goals as a right back or as a right wing back. It depends on um, how you want to cut, you know, how you want to count him. But he's scored five goals and assisted seven times. Now, if you compare that to Alexander Zichenko, Tomiyasu, and Benjamin White, com you know, combined it doesn't look good it truly really doesn't look good and that is where the point is could Mikel Arteta be thinking I want a right back who can add some goals I want a right back who can be um, able to defend but also has the ability to assist the likes of uh, you know Jesus, Saka and Gabriel Martinelli could he be looking into that direction so Fabrizio Romano says that he's one to watch because he's uh, he's gonna be very cheap in the summer he has a release clause in his deal which will be active during the summer and that release clause is just 40 million euros that is bad business by Baliva Cousin that is very weak that is very very bad business they should have extended his deal in my opinion in the summer of 2023 that is th that is the only chance they had uh, to extend his deal and increase his, uh, his release clause but if you look at the right backs around the world if you look at some of the players that um you know the world is looking at right now jeremy frimpong is an absolute monster of a player he's an absolute freak of nature at right back now i can only compare him to the likes of Denz, denzel dumfries um you know at the moment demarco those are the fullbacks that are producing you know such high quality work and at 23 at the moment to be on the radar for bayern man united man city arsenal and all these other clubs it's um it's absolutely crazy so roman of course uh they're giving us a very reliable update i like him i think he's um uh, a very good journalist and for me I look towards becoming like Fabrizio Romano. He's such a very good guy. So, Jeremy Frippong versus Ben White. The, 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 the truth is this. Arsenal would benefit more from having a player like Jeremy Frimpong in the side as compared to having a player like Ben White. Now, this doesn't say, or I don't mean that uh, Ben White is not doing good work or Ben White is not actually providing Arsenal uh, with any quality. I think he's actually doing it very well. But when I look at this defense, defending, when I look at him, you know, uh, pushing himself backwards and pulling himself away uh, from danger, when the high-quality wingers are, meeting, you know, are trying to attack him, 1v1, Rashford, Mitoma, I do not see the defensive, uh, you know, uh, the defensive ability that Mikel Arteta really fancies um, in Ben White. 
I don't think he's very good in defending wide areas. I don't think he's very good in 1v1 situations. I think he's more better as a cover-up and as, as uh, a backup for uh, you know the centre-back. So I would be okay with Ben White sitting on the bench, waiting for William Saliba to, re to be rotated. Because the games where I would play uh, Ben White, Sheffield, um, Luton at the Emirates Stadium, you know, such games, I would definitely uh, play Ben White. If you had him, as one of those players always available he's very durable as a player by the way so if you have him always available to um swap with saliba swap with gabriel Magales, that would be a much better scenario than us forcing him into a position where he's clearly struggling in certain games he's clearly struggling um in certain situations and at times we have seen Mikel Arteta try to push thomas Pate a tried back in order for him to invert into the midfield well, probably we have a solution for that, and we have an answer for that, and that answer is the man Jeremy Frimpong at Bale Verkusen. So Jeremy Frimpong and uh, all the other you know players at Bale Verkusen are really on fire this season, right? I've given you you know his numbers, I've shown you what he's done, but this is the advantage of having a player like him in the side. So he is a natural right back. But he is more of um, a right attacker, actually. He's a more of uh, a right-wing attacker. So Saka could benefit massively, massively from Arsenal signing Jeremy Frimpong. The, the, one of the reasons uh, as why we're saying Saka is struggling, Ben White is not giving him those overlapping runs, those overlaps uh, that any right back would give to his right winger or you know, uh, you know, right attacker just to support his moves, just to support him. And Jeremy Frippong, that is the quality he will be bringing to the side. He's um, got the ability to invert inside as a midfielder. And of course, we know these days, all managers want to play a box midfield. So without Alexander Zichenko maybe in the team, when Timber comes back, you could have a back three of Julian Timber, Gabriel Magales, and William Saliba stretching out. And then, um, and then Jeremy Frippong could you know just come inside cut inside and do an alexander zichenko of course he, he doesn't have the control the discipline and uh, the security in position like alexander zichenko and i think that both of them are very different players very talented um but very different um Frimpong loves to take risks and that's why he's, he has seven goals um five goals and seven asses he will take risks he'll go into the final third and he will try to create things happen for Alexander Zichenko, midfield controller, and he's always going to look for that ball that breaks the lines. And look, he will take some risks, but he's, it is safer, and you're actually very, very comfortable when he is in position. Because you know, he's not going to try something very, very crazy, and he won't be caught out of position all the time. Of course, defensively, Jeremy Frimpong is the much better player, right? V 1v1, um, you know, in transition, counter-attack situations, uh, he's better. He's quicker than Ben White and is more reliable to make a right decision uh, while, while he's facing an attacker 1v1 than Benjamin White. So it is not a deal for January, I'm sorry, and I'm not saying that Arsenal are going to put a lot of money on the table to sign him in January, but the will is close and Fabrizio says that that is the reason why all these clubs are actually watching the, uh, the situation very closely. Arsenal think they can trigger the release clause, 40 million euros. Bayern think the same, Man City um, and Manchester United. But for me, uh, even if it's not Jeremy Frimpong, I would love to have a decent, proper right back at Arsenal. Uh, look, I like Ben White. I like him as part of the squad. I think he's an upgrade, a major, major upgrade to Rob Holding. And for, for us to have Ben White as um, the guy waiting on the bench to come on, that is massive. That, like, that is really, really good. He's a player that really doesn't make a lot of mistakes, uh, and I'm not going to lie about him, but I just don't trust him in wide areas, right? I just don't ex try trust his uh, ability and expertise in defending wide areas. So, Jeremy Frippong, Arsenal would be getting two birds hit with one stone. You're getting a guy that is going to attack, help out Saka, and also, if Saka is stuck, um, you have a right winger in Jeremy Frimpong. He's, he's so good that he's going to be bringing in quality crosses and he's going to be cutting inside and, you know, just doing the magic. So that means that clubs will have a problem. They either deal with Saka or they deal with Jeremy Frimpong. You know, the problem with, with, with Arsenal right now is we are very predictable. And it's all about 
doubling up on Saka, doubling up on, uh, on Gabriel Martinelli, and Arsenal are dead, absolutely dead. So when you bring in a player like Jeremy Frimpong, and then you bring in Timba as well, who is very, very courageous, carries the ball, um, is very good at passing the ball as well, and breaks the lines, that is a whole new level of attacking. That's a very, very different level uh, of attacking. And Timba is defensively absolutely solid and very, very secure. So for me, um, it's a no-brainer. If Arsenal can get th this deal done, if Arsenal are sure and serious about you know signing Jeremy Frimpong, I, I wouldn't even I, I wouldn't even care. I wouldn't even mind. He's such a beautiful player. He's such a real quality player in my opinion but i want your thoughts there in the comment box below 40 million euros for um a top right back 23 years of age resale value is there as well um and it comes from the netherlands just like jill and timba i mean get the deal done just get the deal done it's a very good deal it's a very very good deal uh, and i would love it to, uh, i would love to see arsenal you know make it happen so we are watching him closely alongside other clubs we will wait to see what happens and I will be reporting very, very soon and very, very re reliably on this situation. Now, Arsenal are also still interested in Calvin Phillips at Manchester City. Mikel Arteta, again, he's one of the players that he wanted prior to his move to Manchester City. But the player uh, decided that he would love to go to Man City, settle in there um, and also play with one of the best teams in the world but also under one of the best managers in the world now i've seen people trying to criticize kevin phillips that he's not good enough that he made a wrong decision to, by going to manchester city let's talk about it number one he is a quality player right just because he went to man city and he sat on the bench and he has put on a, a, you know some you know kind of form and he was unlucky that when he got to man city and there is lottery you're done your career is done at that club you're not going to play football someone tell this boy I mean, it's, the, it's, it's the same stupid decision alexander song belong made when he came from arsenal he went from arsenal and signed for baka right so he signed for baka a barcelona that had xavi busquets and iniesta literally these guys didn't pick up injuries they didn't pick up suspensions they played for spain and played for uh, barcelona every single day like it it is stupid you don't make such a you know a blunder and i think that is where calvin phillips has actually um you know uh, got it wrong going to man city with laudry you uh, you don't yeah you just don't right Lodri, Gundogan, uh, Bernardo Silva, you're not going to start ahead of any of those guys. They are way more talented than you are, and they're more experienced than you are, and they're gifted beyond imaginable, uh, you know, uh, imaginable levels. But um, Arsenal's interest has always been there. And that's why I don't think this is a, a fake story. That's why I think this is a good story, actually, as well. But can Man City sell to us? not really we could use a midfielder i'm telling you we could use a midfielder we could use a player that comes in in that midfield especially in some games to stabilize but also what arsenal are lacking is a player like thomas Partey. we miss Partey. we miss that kind of guy that can pick up the ball in deeper areas and redistribute it at a very quick rate and at a very very quick um uh you know you know through a very quick decision making process that could be calvin phillips that could be this guy because we have seen him play alongside Declan Rice for England and what we actually saw was at times Declan Rice dropping a little bit deeper and Calvin Phillips being a, you know a more advanced position and uh, and why was that Calvin Phillips was responsible for the redistribution uh, of the ball, recycling actually I think um, that's the word you would want to use in footballing terms so he usually uh, is there to recycle uh, the side they, they, they you know play uh, and, and that is one of the things that Arsenal are lacking. If we are in possession and Saka is um, free, can we get the ball to Saka quicker? If we are in possession and Martinelli is free, can we get the ball to Martinelli quicker? Now, Declan Rice, with all his good quality and character, he is not that player. I think Mikel can actually work with him on that. He's one of the players that have actually managed a lot of uh, progressive passes in Europe. No player has played more progressive passes than Declan Rice in Europe. But those progress passes are coming very, very late and they are also 
very slow. So he prefers to dribble the ball into the final third and then he passes it rather than you know picking up the ball in deeper areas and quickly rece uh, releasing um, you know uh, Saka and Gabriel Martinelli. Calvin Phillips would be a very nice signing because he's got that ability and we have seen it um, we have seen it with him uh, during his time at, uh, at Leeds United releasing the likes of Rafinha in time and it was a party it was always a party but I want to see I want to see how this one actually rolls down because Man City are willing to listen to offers but not from Arsenal they don't want to sell to us they don't want to do any further business with us it's pretty much understandable I, I, I also listen I mean there's so many people have said that Pep Guardiola's signings lifted Arsenal to where we are. Not necessarily and not precisely very, very true. Yes, they have added a building block, but I think apart from Alexander Zichenko, we could have got a better striker than Gabriel Jesus and we would have um, you know, gone to a, a, the next level. Maybe Alexander Zichenko and his role uh, last season, it was phenomenal, it was remarkable. It allowed teams to be exploited and disgraced by Arsenal because they didn't know what we were doing. But Kevin Phillips, what I thought about him, he's not played in a while, put on some kind of weight, Newcastle interested, Juventus interested. I want to know your thoughts about him as Arsenal fans.